Hi guys, um, in uh, this video I uh, want to talk a little bit more about um, uh, finding resonance because if you've watched the other videos um, you'll know that since I've been using uh, purified water in the cell then uh, I've been able to uh, actually get the cell to resonate against uh, an inductor and um, so far I've looked at that at um, high frequency ranges and now I'm moving down into uh, lower frequency ranges so I thought I'd share what I'm doing with you. This is the signal generator I'll be using today um, so we've got a, a, a voltage output level uh, control um, we can switch from sine wave to square wave and then it covers the ranges uh, in um, sort of two steps in the one to three so this is the be one two three and then uh, the next range would be three to ten so that's on the inner scale three to ten and then that goes in hertz and kilohertz and it goes up to uh, the maximum here which is uh, uh, 300 kilohertz to one meg so that's on the inner scale 300 kilohertz to one meg um, and uh, I think that's it oh they've got control over the uh, the voltage levels for the output so I've got it set at the maximum which is uh, 7 volts RMS output uh, when I've got that there the uh, oscilloscope is a uh, 20 megahertz uh, oscilloscope and uh, it's two channels and uh, we'll just be using one channel today and uh, I'll tell you what the time base is uh, as uh, I display the signals. Uh, this is the test cell, it's the only one I've made so far and you've seen that before in the other videos. Uh, these little wires on top are just the thermocouple that I've taped up out of the way. And um, I've got a, a couple of leads coming from the signal generator uh, going into the cell, I'll just twist it together down here. Just show you that. So those wires are coming to these two crocodile clips here, and then uh, into the cell. And what I'm going to be doing is um, uh, connecting uh, some of these uh, coils across the two crocodile clips um, on the cell, and um, I'm going to be firing a signal from the signal generator into the cell with uh, a coil connected across here let's start with a high frequency coil we'll have a little coil connected across there I'm going to have the oscilloscope connected across the coil so everything seems parallel there so it's a, a signal that's coming from the signal generator, it'll be a sine wave, it'll be fired into the tank circuit, and um, tank circuit comprising of the plates, which effectively are the capacitance, or the capacitor in the circuit, and the little coil is the inductor. And then the resulting signal will be displayed on the oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do is reposition everything so that the cell is out of the way because we don't need to see that now we know what's uh, happening there and really what I want you to be able to see is the oscilloscope I'll go through the setup of that on, uh, on the video I want you to be able to see the uh, oscilloscope and the signal generator so I've got the uh, coil connected in parallel across the tank circuit I've got the signal generator um, supplying a sine wave um, and uh, we're on the range of 300 kilohertz to 1 meg so that's on the uh, inner scale you can't see my finger that's on the inner scale and um, at, at this point here that's uh, 850 and 890 is here and if you watch uh, the scope you'll see peak uh, somewhere around there okay and several ways you can look at that oh I should say the um, uh, the scope is on 0.2 microseconds per division there and um, 
so obviously I've, I'm displaying that sine wave and um, as I move the frequency as I go uh, uh, higher frequency so you can see that uh, the peaks have diminished as I go lower frequency so the peaks have diminished and it's reasonably you can say well somewhere there is the peak if you move the uh, signal generator very quickly uh, it will uh, ap appear to to go to a higher peak and that's that has more to do with the output stability of the signal generator um, it sort of overcompensates until it settles down so you, you, you do this very gently to actually see the peak sometimes what I do is I'll, I have the time base set like that and um, I'll increase again and then lower that signal increase it again and lower it right that's as far down as it can go um, now when I adjust the uh, the signal I've got the maximum amplification here so um, I'm lowering the signal you can see it's clearly gone down I'm raising it that's about the point that it's peaking and then I'm raising the frequency and it's going down again now, uh, let's say sometimes what I do is I switch on the other trace and then set that as a marker so close to the tops of where I think uh, resonance is and then you can it just makes it a little easier to see when you're at that point and then uh, you can uh, read the uh, the frequency either off the scope or off the uh, the signal generator okay what I'll do now is I'll change the coil this one's uh, 35 turns again half inch diameter air cord and that's around 640 kilohertz uh, again the, um, the scope now is on 0.5 microseconds per division okay so that's a 35 turn coil um, I'll show you this coil and uh, that's a, uh, a 1.77 micro Henry's haven't counted how many turns is on that um, but I'll pop that one on okay so now um, again we know uh, it's a bigger coil so we know we've got to open up the frequency uh, if we go higher in frequency that should diminish yeah, so no surprises there and then as we come down in frequency okay so you might say somewhere around there what I'm going to do is uh, change the time base and I'm also going to lower that just so as we can get it a bit more into shot and we're now on two microseconds per division let's put our marker on Okay, it's some, somewhere around there, and uh, that is, um, uh, let's have a look, we're still on the 300 uh, kilohertz to uh, 1 meg, so uh, that's around 555 kilohertz, and it's, um, it's getting a little bit harder to actually define the peak. The higher in frequency that you work, the much uh, sharper this uh, this change is. So you tune along, and then you you hit resonance, and you you see the peak. And in fact, when uh, I use the little uh, two-turn coil, and uh, on the VNA experiment in the, the earlier videos, uh, you see that very dramatic um, uh, dip on the uh, screen of the VNA and you, you know you get this very clear 
image of a, a high Q circuit. The bigger the coil, the lower the Q. Um, what you may have noticed is when I change from uh, one um, coil to the other, I went to the larger coil, um, what, uh, what you may have noticed is that the uh, amplitude got higher and that is because uh, the, the coil it represents a higher impedance so it's it's not suppressing the voltage uh, as much so again um, because all of these are larger coils or, or going um, down in frequency we know that we we've got to go down in frequency on here um, so now, do you see what I mean about it being a little harder to actually define the point where it peaks? We know it's peaking, we can see it, but because we're working at a lower frequency... Uh, because we're working at a lower frequency, it gets a little bit uh, harder to see the peak of the the bell or the bell response I should say so that's somewhere around there and um, that is uh, uh, what are we on? 420 kilohertz or thereabouts. So, there. Um, oh, this, uh, you remember I said earlier that if, um, let's get rid of that, uh, if, if you move this too quickly you'll see a high peak. You see that, uh, that jump, and that jump is um, uh, a characteristic of the signal generator and just to go back to what I was talking about again with that showing as a as a solid band so we can see there and say so it's just a different way of looking at exactly the same thing um, okay now that's looking at the uh, uh, the cell as a parallel resonance circuit and that's fine that works well with a series resonance circuit however if the cell was connected to a perfect power supply it would be okay but the re reality is that the power supply has stray capacitance and the leads connecting the cell to the power supply has stray capacitance and th this affects the resonant frequency. That's probably about as far as I want to go on this video because otherwise it's likely to be um, uh, too long. So um, I hope you found that interesting and, and helpful hopefully um, as uh, I say the main thing with the resonance cell is I've only been able being able to get it to resonate because I'm using purified water with a low resistivity. If I was to put tap water into uh, this uh, cell, if I was to put tap water into here, I know I cannot get it to resonate. Um, it's at anything, um, I was going to say anything other than radio frequencies, but I didn't even have any success at radio frequency. The only way I can make that resonate is to use purified water. I want to say a very big thanks to Max Miller from Ohio. Max has offered to donate a multi-plate test cell in order to enhance my uh, project. So uh, I'm really looking forward to receiving that. And thank you very much, Max. Uh, completely out of the blue and very unexpected. Thank you. Okay guys, uh, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.